Welcome, everyone. My name is Steve Borkenhagen. I am the executive director of Urban Confluence Silicon Valley. I'm really glad you're joining us today so we can update you on our competition. <clears throat> Excuse me, the deadline is July 1st, which is uh, which is coming up soon. It's only 27 days remaining. So I strongly suggest that if you've got ideas ruminating around in your mind, that you sit down, work hard and submit. I'm gonna come back to this slide later. Again, this is me, Steve Borkenhagen. I live in San Jose in the middle of Silicon Valley. I'm gonna go through the next slides very quickly. I'm guessing many of you have been on some of our previous webinars or on our site tours, and I don't want to belabor some of the simple details related to the competition, but this is an open ideas competition, meaning that any, anyone in the world is welcome to submit. There is no charge, no fee to enter. You can enter as many times as you like. No hard copies will be accepted. It's all digital, must be in English. Make sure that your submission except in the obvious places doesn't have anything that identifies you. That's particularly true in your design presentation boards. Uh, there's clear instructions on our website. Late submissions will not be accepted and uh, you can submit as many times as you like. Each submission requires a unique email address. And of course, keep copies of everything you send but the uh, submittable is the platform that we use and it's very simple. We have a spectacular jury of people from around the world. Um, they're serious professionals, artists, architects, placemakers of various types, and uh, they're gonna take this very seriously and we are really excited to see uh, all the great submittals that all of you come up with soon. We will be giving away $450,000 in stipends. So three finalists selected by the jury when they meet in early August will each get $150,000 stipend as part of the phase two refining of the, those three finalist submittals. There's a 200 foot height limit for purposes of the competition, even though we can go slightly higher on the site, but we'll, we'll work that out as a detail in phase two. This would be a good place to remind you that we're looking for big ideas for something spectacular. Don't think that in phase one, you have to have every last detail of your vision refined. You do not. We're looking for the big idea in phase one, something that uh, a juror can look at and very quickly see your inspiration and how spectacular your idea is. In order to submit, you must create an uh, account on submittable. There are links throughout our website to get to submittable and do this very simple again. And then you complete your submission form. If you have any questions, I, I and my assistant Denise are available all the time to support you. If you ever get stuck, uh, don't get frustrated. Just pick up the phone and call me or send me an email. We are offering technical review, uh, meaning that as long as you complete your submission by Monday, June 22nd, we will go through it carefully before the submission deadline and we'll let you know if you made any technical violations of our rules. We are not in the business of disqualifying people. We're in the business of helping you make your submission completely acceptable so the jury can consider it. So do your best to submit by Monday, June 22nd, and then we will, uh, I and some helpers will carefully analyze your submission. Those of you who have already submitted know that very shortly after you submit, we send you an email either telling you that there are no technical violations or that you have to fix something. Uh, most of them have been relatively trivial, font sizes are too small or uh, something like that. There's a document in the resources for submitters on our website that lists these technical criteria. It's very simple and very clear, and most of them are very much common sense. So please don't be intimidated by anything about the competition. We've tried to make it as user-friendly as we can, and I think we've done a pretty good job at that. But again, uh, I'm always here as a resource. We got some great media coverage in 2019, including being named as one of, one of Bustler's top 10 competitions for 2019. Also, we were we got some other good media, New York Times, BBC, et cetera. We, we're trying to do something very important for our community. 
Before we get into questions, I'm going to go back up to, to this slide. How can I request and add it on my submission? It's very straightforward uh, on submittable. If you have trouble with this, just ask me. You can open your submission for editing multiple times. That is, if you decide you're done, you say I'm done, and then you close it. Uh, you can open it again. Uh, but at, uh, at the end of the day, in order for us to do our technical review, we will end up closing it because we're, we're, we're doing technical review on the iteration at that moment. So if you need to do it again, we will do technical review for you again. So hopefully you can all see the Q&A section on here. And uh, uh, we're going to spend the vast majority of this time going through your Q&A. But I want to bring up a couple of other really timely issues. Probably many of you knew of Christo, who died recently. Uh, Christo was a good example of someone with really large ideas and uh, really brought a lot of beauty to the world. And that's what we're trying to do, is bring something really beautiful to the world. And again, I can't say this enough times, don't be hung up on minor details in phase one. Focus on your large vision, uh, something that causes the heart to race and really captivates uh, the jurors. You know, and in this strange time with COVID-19 and all of the, the civil unrest that we've had recently as a result of the murder in Minneapolis, um, I think that art and beauty are more relevant than ever, and that public places matter now more than ever. Many of you and many of us have been isolating at home, and I think people are really craving being in public places and enjoying the commons. And so, you know, this shared resource that we are creating, it's really important. It's inclusive, it's equitable. Uh, public places are one of the great equalizers in the world where someone, regardless of uh, any personal characteristics can go, whether you're rich or poor, with the color of your, color of your skin, your religion, we all can share those things together. And so we're trying to really bring something beautiful to San Jose, Silicon Valley, and to the world. We're simply trying to make life richer for everyone. Our city is going through an immense building boom. Uh, the better part of $10 billion are being invested uh, right near Arena Green, the site where our project is going. We've got uh, major players, uh, including Google, uh, Jay Paul, a, a really significant regional developer, the uh, Adobe company that's building a new building, and a, a group led by Gary Dillabo and Jeff Arriaga have purchased uh, 10 or 20 properties in and, in and around downtown San Jose, and they're all building spectacular projects. So the context for, for our art or architecture work could really not be better. So I just want you to know that things are really set up well for us to do something that's going to be an, a tremendously important accent in our community. So, so let me go into questions now. What about, uh, um, uh, excuse me, how many have registered so far? Uh, we've, we've got about 160 submissions. Uh, we've got a few thousand registrations. Um, and uh, again, we're in the home stretch, so we would encourage all of you to finish your submissions. We've been told that submissions always come in at the last minute, and uh, we've tried to avoid that a bit by offering you the technical review if you do it by, by June 22nd. Is the deadline for submissions definite? Yes, it is definite. We are not gonna change the July 1st deadline, so please finish your submittals. We have an idea while we are working on the site plan that requires us to use the river and drag it toward the project. Are we allowed to do that? No, we cannot redirect the river. We can't do anything inside of the riparian corridor. So you have to accept it as is. Obviously we want to make it better, but, uh, but um, we cannot change anything about the river in the creek. Are there any nearby car parks to possibly house solar panels to generate necessary power for my submission? Yes, that's a really good question because it begs the question about the net zero requirement. You don't have to have your net zero completely figured out in phase one. We can do that in phase two. So for example, if one's idea was to go to nearby parking lots and put in PV solar, you could simply list that in your narrative and that would be adequate. 
you don't have to know exactly how it's going to be engineered at this point. The community competition panel will review entries and recommend up to 50 entries to the jury. Who is the community competition panel? Uh, the community competition panel is a group of approximately 30 leaders in our community who will simply recommend ideas that they like to the jury. The jury will not be bound to only select from them. So it's largely a community building exercise and a way for uh, people who care about uh, San Jose and Silicon Valley to weigh into our competition. And is everyone going to be able to vote online? Uh, we're not going to have a vote, but we are going to have a protocol for people to be able to comment. So shortly after the deadline, as soon as we know all of the acceptable submittals, they will all be posted online for the public to see. Will I be able to share the link to my proposal to vote? How does that maintain anonymity? Um, no, you will not be able to share a link and you must maintain anonymity throughout the competition. So again, there's not, there's not going to be votes. So there'd be no reason for any of you to post something on social media say, asking your friends to vote for your, for your submission. So this anonymity requirement is very, very important. The only three submissions uh, submitters whose names will ever be revealed are those of the three finalists. Also during, um, during the time between the submission deadline and the end of phase one when the, when the jury meets, uh, you will not be allowed to post on social media. So you do not want to uh, violate your anonymity at all, period. Why is there's a lot that belongs on the block on the east side. Why is it not included in the site plan? Uh, I think the questioner is referring to a few houses that are on the north edge of uh, Arena Green East, and they're, they're simply not owned by the city and they're not part of the site plan. There's actually a proposal for a hotel to go in there. It's about an acre at the, at the northeast corner of Arena Green East. What is the height of the SAP building across the street. It's approximately 110 feet. So it's, it's about half the height of what we can do at Arena Green. Many of these questions I'll remind you are answered in the FAQ on our website. If you're about to submit, I strongly suggest that you spend 15 minutes and go read all the FAQ. There are probably a hundred of them and they're all relevant to all of you. And uh, we've really worked hard to give you answers to all of the most obvious questions that you have. I'm trying to submit my boards by June 22nd and keep working on the optional video until July 1st. May I do that? Certainly, yes. Uh, when, you've, when you've done everything other than the video, simply send me an email and tell me that you'd like to get technical review and we will do that for you. And then we'll review the video separately because the same rules that apply regarding anonymity and other criteria also apply to the video. Are there any particular restrictions on the existing structures on the site? That is, may I remo remove them or change them? Uh, uh, virtually all of the structures on the site can be removed. Uh, you'll see an FAQ about this and you should read the brief carefully because there are a lot, many artworks on the site that cannot be changed. I shouldn't say many, there are a few, uh, but most of the buildings, which would include restrooms, the carousel, and a little ticket booth for the carousel can be uh, altered or eliminated. Regarding the stipend, is that only paid after the concept is worked up to a realistic costing stage, or is that paid in stages up front in order to help pay for the process of creating it? It's going to be paid in phases. We're going to be very uh, respectful of, of you as the designers and your process. So as soon as the jury has selected the, those three finalists, we will immediately negotiate the stipend agreement with, with the three of you. Uh, I hope you can all respect that the three finalists could all be very different. So it's going to require us working separately with those three, three finalists to make sure that we're giving you the support you need. But uh, our intention would be to have some kind of benchmarks where we distribute the stipend money. Because the point is for you to use the money to help you refine your design. Most of you will need a number of specialists to help you get to the end of phase two. 
and at the end, <coughs> excuse me, at the end of phase two, that's when the winner will be chosen from the three finalists. Can the street between Arena Green and SAP become pedestrian? I think this means pedestrian only. Uh, probably not. Uh, you're welcome to suggest that in your narrative, but that would be a, a huge negotiation necessary with both the Sharks who run, <clears throat> excuse me, the SAP Center and also with the city who owns the street. The city also owns the park, just to be clear. So we've been working with our partners at the city from the very beginning, in particular, Nicole Burnham at Parks, Recreation and Neighborhood Services has really been an important partner in helping us na navigate all of the uh, issues uh, at the city level. Are we supposed to bring some changes to the green space between our west and east site, east site areas? Uh, no, you don't have to. You don't have to mention the river, the riparian corridor at all. But you could mention it in your narrative if you if you want. As we move forward, the whole issue of the river and what can and cannot be done is something we'll deal with in phase two and phase three. The Santa Clara Valley Water District uh, actually owns the rivers, and so. You know, they're interested in a, in a healthy water system and uh, we have many common goals. So we'll be working with them later uh, on ways that we might improve that, but it would all be controlled by them, not by us. Some of the jury members have changed since the beginning of the competition. Why? Uh, just because of availability. Some people who had committed previously are no longer available. So uh, we think we replaced some really great uh, jurors with other great jurors. We're thrilled with who, the people we have now. Are there fish in the river? Salmon? Uh, yes, there are fish. Pretty big fish. Uh, it's only 10 miles or so to San Francisco Bay <clears throat> from Arena Green. And uh, there are fish and lots of other animals in the river. So the flora and the fauna are really abundant in the river. There have even been beavers there, certainly lots of birds. I've seen uh, uh, egrets and um, many other birds. Are new bridges allowed from Arena Green East to Arena Green West? Yes, you can, you can have uh, bridges or other items that span the river. Are any supports allowed in the riparian zone? Uh, no, they are not. It's possible that something minimal might be allowed that we would work on during phase two, but to, to have giant foundational pieces in the riparian corridor is not acceptable. Are there flooding issues if we build below ground next to the Los Gatos Creek and Guadalupe River? Uh, yes, there would be. Uh, although there's a huge flood control project that's already been done, so the park doesn't flood anymore, but the, 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 the phrase that I'm dealing with here is below ground. I'm not quite sure what the questioner means. You're welcome to call me and I'll dig deeper on this with you. But uh, there was a huge flood in the early 90s after which hundreds of millions of dollars were spent to build uh, bypass culverts for the water that flows through uh, in the river through Arena Green. So now, uh, uh, if the water gets to be up above about 15 or 20 feet, it go, the water goes into these bypass culverts and doesn't flood Arena Green or the park. In phase one, the PDF file contains two boards. Since it's an ideas competition, there won't be plans or drawings in detail. Hence, the info could be quite few for two boards. Is it possible to only present one board? Um, no, you need to present two boards. And what I would say is if you don't have lots of ideas, um, just take a lot of space for your grand idea on one of the boards or even on both of the boards. Again, it's, it's about inspiration. We have ideas about flood control and soil erosion using sustainable technology. Would this be considered? Cert certainly yes. Remembering though that the, the site for your design is clearly defined on the west and the east sides. Is it mandatory for the project to be extremely high? No, it's not mandatory. Uh, we see it as a great opportunity, but it's not mandatory. You can have a submission that is high or low or small or squat or anything you want. We're looking for something that is dramatic and world-class and will help put San Jose on the map though. <clears throat> Oh, 
when we use the given site plan, can we change the colors or the line weights or the text on the plan given in CAD and in the PDF? Yes, but make sure that you clearly delineate the buildable area. We're not here again to disqualify you for petty reasons, but we do, it is critical that the jurors are able to see where your design is on the site. And that's why we've given you that site plan that's available both on our website and on submittable. Should the 100 and 400 word summary and statement be part of the submitted boards or sent separately? Uh, this person has obviously not looked at submittable. It's very, very clear that they're separate. Also, you do not need to put your narrative on the boards. You should use the boards for inspiration and for the big vision. The 100 and 400 word statements and summaries will be read, but they, they, they are separate. If you want to put words on your boards, you are welcome to, but you do not have to. Then there's a question about resending the exact technical rules for submitting. Uh, you need to read the, the brief in order to do that. And there's also the document I referred to earlier that appears in the resources for submitters. Resources for submitters, other than the brief, is the most important part of our website. If you're submitting, you, you owe it to yourself to go spend a little time there. So a questioner says, I can't get my extended family to vote for my submission. Um, no, there is no vote except for the jury's vote. But you're welcome to get them to comment, but comments are not the same as votes. Do we download the template presentation board and bring it into our system, then make a new PDF at the right size, or do we have to place our files into the template? Uh, it's actually self-explanatory if you go to Submittable, but you download the templates, you put your design on them, and then you upload them back to Submittable. Again, if anybody's having technical problems, feel free to reach out to me directly. Is it possible to go underground? Certainly, yes. Now, that being said, we don't know the specifics about the water table there. So if you had something that went extremely deep, uh, it could be a problem. We, we have no way of knowing. We'll know, we'll know more in phase two, but don't let that affect your creativity. So if you have a great idea that goes underground, just know that if the idea is fabulous, you could be a finalist and then we'll work out the technical details in phase two. Is it possible that we put structures on the area labeled easement to Santa Clara Valley Water District or owned in fee by Santa Clara Valley Water District? Uh, no, the, you, you must keep your designs inside of the, line, the green lines that establish the buildable area. Now it's possible that minimal things will be able to be added to those areas referred to, but we'll figure that out in phase two. Do we need to use the provided site plan or can we use a satellite image? Uh, you must use the site plan. If you want to take satellite imagery and somehow overlay it, you can do that, but it's critical that the jury can clearly see the site plan lines. Can we extend landscape elements, including trees and bridges that land outside the project boundary? Uh, landscaping is incredibly important. In fact, your entire proposal could be a landscape idea if that's what you chose to do. So within the buildable areas, uh, you can again do anything you want. Landscape, water, tall structures, short structures, underground as we just discussed. And, and bridges are acceptable crossing from the, the east to the west or the west to the east, however you want to look at that. What if we propose something that's 130 feet high, but the panel likes the idea, the, by the panel, the, I think the questioner means the jury. What if we propose something 130 feet high, but the jury would prefer it to be 200 feet high, et cetera? That's a really good question that, that we're going to be very practical with that. If the jury saw something and they thought it would be better higher, they would probably make a note of that. And if you were a finalist in phase two, we would, we would discuss that with you. Um, you might decide, no, it must be 130 feet high. And uh, then we would have to deal, that in, deal with that in our discussion with you when we're in the process of signing the stipend agreement. Can you please comment on Arena Green West versus East? 
Should a submission address both or just one or the other? It can be one or the other or both. <coughs> Excuse me. You do not, you are not required to have a design that, that deals with both the east and the west portions of the site. On the presentation board, do we need to show at least two renderings of the proposed design? No, it's two boards to show one design. So you can use the two boards any way you like. We originally had asked for one board, but many, many of you said, please let us have two boards. We need more space to articulate our vision. And so we did that, but you, you, you can use those two boards any way you like. Can you please remind us about the announcement of the three finalists? <clears throat> the jury will be meeting on August 3rd and 4th, and then it will take us probably a month or so to sign the stipend agreements with those three finalists, because the three finalists are probably all going to be very different. The announcement of the three finalists will likely happen on September 18th. That's September. September 18th. Is it possible to use the site photo from the website to make image simulation and put the credits of urban confluence? Since I'm, I'm a foreigner, I don't have pictures from the site. Uh, first off, there are some uh, images of the site on the website. Secondly, you're certainly welcome to go to Google Images, Google Earth, wherever, any, any other places online to see photographs. And you can certainly use uh, pictures from the website and give us attribution, certainly yes, or attribution to the photographer insofar as we've attributed the source of the photograph on our, on our website. What are the dimensions of the presentation board? We are going, we still plan to print the up to 50 submissions recommended by the community competition panel. We are hoping still that we will have a public display of those printed boards that are 24 by 36, but you don't have to print them. We will print them. All you have to do is follow the guidelines with the correct uh, ratios that appear in, in submittable. Can you please elaborate on the project summary and project statement? These are simply 400 word and 100 word summaries. Uh, the statement uh, will be used for the jurors so that it's your opportunity to explain your vision. The project summary, the 100 word project summaries are actually gonna be intended probably for the media. So when we announce our three finalists, we would probably share those 100 word project summaries with media. So it would be a way for you in very briefly to explain to someone what it is that you're doing and what your vision is. You have not yet published the new calendar to know the date of the three projects for next, next stage. So I just did that a moment ago. So again, uh, July 1st deadline, the community competition panel meets in July, the jury meets in early August, and in mid-September, the three finalists would be publicly announced. But if you're one of the three finalists, shortly after the jury meets, we would call you and begin to negotiate the stipend agreement. We will not make announcements of any of the winners until the stipend agreements are signed. It would be possible for some reason that we couldn't come to an agreement with one of the three. And if that's the case, we would uh, have alternates whom we would talk to. Are we allowed to overlay annotation on the map? If a building on the site does not stack straight up, should we show a dashed line for the floors above ground level if they are different? Can we cover the text that says, quote, west side area available for design competition area? Yes, you can cover the, the copy that we have on there and you can use that space any way you like with copy or with, with images. Is it possible to design a little hollow around the monument seat? Forgive me, but I don't understand the question. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. What will the overall final budget be? We have been clear since we began that we do not have a maximum budget. 
So we believe that something that's very expensive can can be built and we can raise the money for it as long as it's spectacular. So please don't stifle your imagination. Shoot for the stars. Could we introduce supports or columns to hold flying structures on the confluence point to connect both locations of the competition? That's a new question for me. Fascinating idea. Uh, I'm not sure I completely understand it though, whether it's talking about something like flying buttresses or literally uh, flying uh, airplanes or helicopters or something like that. So not understanding it completely, I'm not going to try to answer that, but uh, questioner, please feel free to call me or send me an email and I will answer your question. Is it assured that the project will be built? Are all of the agreements with the city in place? Uh, all of the agreements are not in place. We have had two unanimous approvals from the San Jose City Council allowing us to move forward with Arena Green, which as I've said earlier, is a city park. We've got the city council, the mayor and city staff, including the city manager, supportive of our vision. So right now we have a vision, but what's ultimately going to be built is unknown. So once it's known, then we will have to go through all of the same entitlements as any project would, and we have no reason to think that we, we will not be successful with that. We've got a team of architects and builders working with us who are experts on city process. And then the question about actually building it, uh, we have uh, committed ourselves to raising however much money it takes to do this. We live in probably the wealthiest place in the history of the world. We have a lot of people who care about public projects. We've already got 300 or more donors. We expect probably to have uh, double that by the end of the year. And we, we are prepared to do outreach to wealthy individuals, companies, foundations, and the entire community, uh, really throughout the world. What we expect to get donors from many places, not just from here. Is it best practice to deliver the submission by June 22nd? Uh, yes, again, if you wait till the last minute and you submit on the deadline day of July 1st, you, your, your submittal will still be uh, looked at extremely carefully, but putting us in a position where if you had some kind of egregious violation, a technical violation that you're forcing us to disqualify you is not something we want to do. So that's why we've offered you re early review if you submit by June 22nd, and I highly suggest that you all do that. Uh, even if you were just close to submitting, if you submitted and put in a note with it to, to me saying that you're working on a few other things, that would allow us to do as much technical review as possible of your submission. And you could start that immediately. You could call me today or tomorrow and say, I'm thinking of the following. Uh, again, you have no anonymity with me. I am the member of our team along with, with my assistant, Denise Franklin, that sees all of the submittals. So you have me and us as a resource to figure out if you're not doing something correctly. So please use us between now and then. There's no reason for you to stress about whether some feature of your design presentation board <laughs> will be seen as being unacceptable. Which museum in the area has material for the local prehistoric life and population of the area? I don't know the answer to that. I, um, just like you, I would just have to do some online research, but History San Jose, I'll say it again, History San Jose is our local history organization who's got a huge archive of material. That's where I would begin. I would just call them, tell them what it is you're interested in. And I think it's likely that they would be able to direct you to what it is you, that you want. How will the printed presentation boards be arranged? Horizontal, vertical, side by side? Um, our plan is to arrange them in, the, in a logical way based on the actual submission. So if they're horizontal, they could be left to right or top to bottom and same, same with vertical. So if you have strong feelings about that that aren't obvious to, to me because I'll, I will be curating that, then just simply send me a note or include in your submission a simple note that says how you'd like them to be arranged. 
presently is the only way to move from the east to the west through the footpaths. Uh, the only way to get from east to west currently is on the sidewalks. Uh, one would have to uh, leave Arena Green west to the side and go to the sidewalk on either Santa Clara Street or St. John Street and then cross over to Arena Green East. However, there is a bridge that goes from Arena Green west to Confluence Point, but there is not a bridge that goes from Confluence Point to Arena Green East. How long will the participants have to complete phase two? Really good question. Uh, we don't know yet, but uh, what I can say, it will be months and it will be reasonable. So once we get into the stipend agreements with the three finalists, uh, one of the important points of discussion will be to establish how much time you have to do your work. Do you know what tree species are around the carousel? No, I, I do not. A tree, a proper tree inventory of the site does not exist. Uh, if you have more specific questions, I'll try to answer them with help from the Parks Department. But I know that we, they don't have a plan that lists all of the trees and what their species are. The brief mentions lighting requirements again and again. Is that a must for the, for the uh, competition? Um, it is not a must, but I can tell you that we began thinking about a light tower. Uh, we, of course, abandoned that and opened our, our minds to anything and everything that you creatives can come up with. But um, I can tell you that lighting is very important to our team and that our dream would be to have this, this installation that gets built have spectacular lighting and really be uh, magnificent in the nighttime as well as in the daytime. Is this presentation available to us? I didn't see the first few slides. Uh, if you, we will post this webinar tomorrow and you'll be able to see the slide, the slideshow. Again, if you have specific questions, follow up with me personally anytime you like. You just mentioned that comments can be made dur during the jury process. Is that via website or how will that take place? Our website, will share all of the submissions, all of the submissions shortly after the deadline and have a process for comments. So it'll be self-evident. You'll go to the website, you'll click on, on submissions and there'll be a, 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 a chat function somewhat like this where you'll be able to leave your comments. Can structures hang over the riparian corridor if they do not touch the ground? Certainly yes. How important is ongoing site activation and programming as part of phase one? Very good question. We've clearly stated in the brief that activation matters to our project. The last thing we would wanna do is take some magnificent art object or architectural object, put it in the park and then leave and leave the park in the state it is currently. So we want activation. Now, what does activation mean? It could be a bar, could be cafe, could be a visitor center, restaurant, it could be virtually anything. And yes, it does matter, but in phase one, it is not critical. So you're welcome to mention activation strategies in phase one or even include them on your design board if you like, but it is not mandatory. Which small scale site plan should be used? The one on submittable. It also appears on our website in the site maps. There are four, four maps there and it's the bottom of the four and it's identical to the one on submittable and it clearly states that. But if you're confused, go to submittable, go to the site plan, upload it and that's the one. Do we have to put this site plan on our boards? Yes, it can be any size you like. If it's got lots of detail, you might want it to be larger. If it has almost no detail, for example, if it's just the site plan, with a marker of the location of some kind of an object or tower that you've, you've designed or whatever it might be, then you can keep it really simple and it could be very small. Again, think of the design presentation board as your opportunity to express your idea. So we really haven't been very prescriptive in that. Does site activation include the areas outside Arena Green East and Arena Green West? No activation needs to happen inside of the buildable areas. Can we provide something very conceptual or is it better to stick to the current site condition and create something 
quote unquote down to earth. You can be as conceptual as you like. You know, the key is inspiration and magnificence. Does Arena Green have visiting hours? Another way to ask that question would be, is there a curfew? Uh, I believe that city parks in San Jose currently have a curfew of 10 p.m. I'm not certain that that's the case. There will probably continue to be a curfew, but I'll, the asterisk I'll put on that is if we have spectacular activation opportunities, especially that involve food and beverage, let's imagine now a restaurant, uh, I don't see why the city wouldn't consider revising its rules to allow later visiting. The city shares our vision that this urban park should be highly accessible and visited by thousands of people every day and enjoyed by the world. So we're not going to let technical rules get in the way of the use of the park. And I, I, um, what I can say will happen is in conjunction with, the, with our partners at parks and the city manager's office, and the city council, we'll, we'll, we will try to have rational policies in place that allow people to enjoy the park. So when you're designing, think about something that could, could be open late, uh, even if it violates the current hours, knowing that there will be policy changes that we might have to fight for on, on, on your behalf and on our behalf. Does the text on the design presentation board count toward the 400 word limit on the project statement? No. Project statement's 400 words, project summary is 100 words, and you can have as many words as you like on your design presentation board. Having said that though, I'll remind you that the boards need to be spectacular representations of what you have, so beware of too many words. Approximately when will the finalists be notified that they are finalists? The three who are chosen will be will be notified uh, not long after August 4th, as soon as we've had a chance to do our internal work. So probably there'll be phone calls to begin that stipend negotiation within a week of uh, August 4th. Is there a production period that you aim to have the project completed by? Excellent question. Uh, depending on the complexity of the design, again, we have uh, our, uh, the chairman of our board is John Ball. John ran uh, Hensel Phelps in the Western United States for many years. He's an expert on building very large, very expensive things. We have some of the best minds in San Jose and Silicon Valley on our team. These would include architects, artists, builders and we can only build something on a reasonable schedule. So based on the winning idea, we will then create a schedule. Uh, likely the, the design documents, in, including the CEQA in California, that is uh, environmental rules, uh, might take us uh, a year and then we'd be in construction. So uh, I can't answer the question about uh, when we hope to be done. But suffice it to say that we want to keep moving forward and build it as soon as we can. Can one submitter be in phase two with more than one design? Yes, in, in theory, one person could be all three finalists. Uh, imagine someone who submitted three spectacular ideas and the jury has chosen all three of them. I want to remind you that it's all anonymous. Since the jury will not know who those submitters are, they wouldn't even know that the same person has submitted all three. So that is in the realm of the possible. There is no limitation to how many of those final three can be the same designer. Got one note that says, thank you. That's very nice. Thank you all for being here too. There are not as many photos of Arena Green as I would like online. Is there a site we can go to to download some of the images that have decent resolution? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, all I can seg suggest is that you go and search online, put in Arena Green West or Arena Green East and see what you come up with. And if you don't come up with anything acceptable to you, let me know and I will try to be helpful to you if I can. Who, who will be able to view the printed boards and how and where? We don't know yet because of COVID our original plan to have a public viewing of the boards 
has been put on the back burner. None of us can know what will and will not be allowed in San Jose uh, after the submission deadline. Uh, our hope would be that after the community panel meets in mid-July, that the that public places will be allowed to have uh, a viewing like we're talking about. It, 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 it's really very much like an art gallery where we would take up to 100 boards and we would display them and invite the public to come free of charge and look at them and comment. We just can't know that yet, but we still hope that we will be able to do that. If we do, it will be somewhere in the down, downtown and we will heavily publicize it so everyone in the community knows that they are invited to join us and to make comments. How heavy is the element of lighting in the overall uh, criteria? I don't have a clear answer for you there. What I'll say is that what really matters is that you have a spectacular design. You can see the criteria in the brief. Lighting matters, but what really matters is that you have an overall spectacular project that can stand up favorably with the great objects around the world. My project will be hand drawn, including dimensions. But when configuring the panels, it cannot be scaled since I'm just using architectural software. Is it okay if I don't put a determined scale? You need to explain the size of whatever it is you're drawing, however you wanna do that. I, I don't wanna take a lot of time on that right now. If you're struggling with this, feel free to, feel free to contact me directly. But, Imagine yourself as a juror, you need to know whether something is 20 feet tall or 200 feet tall, or else there's no way that you could evaluate whether you think it's a good design or not. If bridging between the two sides, what is the required clearance below the structure? Very good question, and no one knows the answer to that. You will not be disqualified if the amount of space you have below ends up needing to be modified based on city, city policies and codes. We would work through that in phase two. So don't be too hung up on something like that. If you're concerned, what I would suggest is just put a single sentence that, that mentions that so at least the jurors know that you're thoughtful about the issue. If we submit a project for technical review on, on June 22nd, can we continue to work on it until July 1st? Yes, but remember that anything you do after the 22nd might not be technically reviewed. So you'd be uh, sort of on your own, making sure that you're not violating any of those technical review criteria. This would be a good time to say though, our technical criteria are not complicated or esoteric. They're very straightforward. So if you use common sense in doing your submission and you read those criteria in the resources for submitters, you shouldn't have any trouble whatsoever. Is commenting moderated once you publish submitted works on your website? Um, that's a really excellent question. Um, we, would, we would moderate it in the sense that if we saw something that identified a submitter somehow by some third party, we would not want that to happen. Uh, so we're going to be careful that those, that those comments are uh, are appropriate in all ways, uh, you know, not um, pornographic or rude or disrespectful, etc. So, uh, yes, uh, we will moderate them somehow. We haven't figured out exactly how we're going to do that yet, but we will. But our goal is to share them all with the world. So just know that our goal is not to censor anyone's uh, thoughts and opinions. Are there any requirements for the entrance to the green space? That's a really excellent question. Uh, we don't know the answer to that. What I would say is uh, common sense at the city will prevail. Uh, you, if you have some magic uh, idea of a grand entrance of some kind, certainly you're welcome to include it in your, uh, in your submission. Please post all questions and answers at the competition website as soon as possible, since many changes might have been developed along the webinars. 
What I'll tell you is that we haven't made lots of question, uh, changes since the webinars. We've continued to add FAQ, but anything that's significant, you will see in the FAQ. So if you read the FAQ, you can really be confident that you understand what our rules and regulations are. And if you're ever concerned about something seeming contradictory, please send me an email or call me and I will work on it immediately. As the site map is required to be shown, is anything allowed to be verified? Or it has to be exactly the same as the example shown? I'm a little confused about the question, but you want to use the exact site map. That being said, we are being practical. So if you take that site map and you overlay it over something else, or you overlay something, some design element you have over the site map, we are not going to disqualify you. But again, keep in mind that you're trying to clearly communicate with the jury where your design goes on the site. Is there a hierarchy related to the tower, in the tower in quotation marks, because as you know, we are not necessarily building a tower, and the landscape design. What do we want more of? We don't want more of one or the other or of anything. We want something spectacular, whether it's landscape, architecture, art, water, or anything else. The name of the designer should be somewhere on the submits boards or description, or should be anonymous clearly anonymous. You'll notice when you submit that there are, there are categories where we ask for your name and your email address and such. Those will not be shared with the jury. So if you, if you simply follow the instructions on submittable, you will have done everything necessary to maintain anonymity throughout. Will the same jury decide the winner of phase two? Yes. The logo for the competition made with all those lines, excuse me, does the logo have a specific meaning? No, it's pure art. There's no hidden messages there whatsoever. Another thank you. I very much appreciate the kind comments. Can we, can we submit during phase one using metric? No, the, this person clearly has not read the brief. One of the few, because there aren't that many rules, is that it must be in Imperial, not metric. One criterion mentioned in the brief is to make sure lighting does not resemble a landing strip due to the nearby airport. If the design is submitted by June 22nd, during review for technical violations, is that something that would be reviewed to notify the designer if it too closely resembles a landing strip? Yes, we would attempt to do that, but what I would, I would turn this back on, on you as a submitter to just make sure that it doesn't look like a landing strip. It's a pretty simple criterion. Visualize a pilot flying in 90% uh, of the time in San Jose, the planes come from the south and they're heading north. As they're heading north over our site in the dark, imagine if you made the, your lighting look like the landing strip, which is only a couple of miles from our site. It just would be a really bad idea. So uh, yes, we will check for that, but you should also be real conscious of that when you're doing your design. Every time I try to submit, it only asks for my email address and I'm not sent any further form. Uh, I'm confused by that question. Uh, please call me or email me later. I will walk you through the process. Will the participants receive a quote unquote participation certificate? Uh, that's something I had never considered before and I love the idea, so I will work on that. Can we build a structure of two to three levels of parking? Excellent question. Uh, we do not need to supply any parking uh, on the site. There are thousands, th many thousands of parking spaces not too far from the site. But uh, we've never had a prohibition against parking. So my 
knee-jerk answer would be that you could suggest parking. But let me, let me put a proviso on that. I'm not sure the city would want any parking there. You know, we're, we're a community evolving toward the next uh, generation of more shared vehicles, public transit, walking, et cetera. So I can't say that for sure. If, you, if any of you do plan on including parking, please call me or send me an email asking that question formally and I'll try to get a formal answer for you. May I build something in the location that currently houses the tennis courts? Yes, the tennis courts can be eliminated. If they are, we would probably end up paying a, uh, in lieu of fee to the city and they would end up building those tennis courts somewhere else. On the stipend of $150,000, what is the limit to spend for consultants to move forward? There is no limit. If you wanted to spend a million dollars and we give you 150,000, that's fine, but you would be spending the balance of that out of your own pocket. Our limit is $150,000. We've reached the end of our hour. Just one moment. I just want to show my contact information one more time. So that any of you who want to contact me can easily do so. But this a reminder: if you go to our website, my name appears everywhere. I'm very easy to find. Uh, I encourage you to call me. I encourage you to email me. I most of all encourage you to submit as many times as you're inspired to do so. Uh, 